Welcome back to our channel. So I decided to start a mom talk series. It's gonna be probably a course of like four to five videos depending on what mom topics I decide to talk about. For example, it'll be like sleep training and how we sleep trained our babies. The first two are gonna be the Q and A. Part one is gonna be today with the first half of the questions and then the second half will be probably posted. In the next week or two, you know, depending on when I'll have time to upload it. But thank you so much to those of you that asked questions on Instagram. And this is just a reminder to not be shy to ask questions because we're all moms here. I want us to all be able to relate to each other and to feel free to have this be super real and honest. So yeah. All right, the first one is your go-to worship songs. So there's so, so many. And honestly, I would probably be sitting here for a few days if I was to name every single song, but I'll just say, name a few. I like anything by Elevation Worship. I love The Same God by Elevation Worship. I love Lion. Another favorite is I Speak Jesus by Charity Gale. All right, gentle parenting slash spanking. I feel like we're half and half we definitely don't spank our kids every day but we believe that it is okay to spank our kids and that is how they learn we discipline in our household and we also do gentle parenting but props to those parents that only do gentle parenting because you have to have like double the patience but yes we do spank our kids we do think it's okay to spank our kids favorite podcasts or preachers to listen to I've been listening to Jerry Derman for the last few years, and if you just look him up on YouTube, he has so many good podcasts, he has so many good sermons. He also does like daily chapter readings, those are also nice, so definitely check him out. I also like to listen to Pastor Bogdan Bondarenko, he is from Living Stream Church in Jacksonville, Florida, and he has a lot of good sermons. Arisen Motherhood also is a uh, woman podcast on Instagram, if you just look them up, they have so many good podcasts. And I feel like I can honestly really relate to them. So check them out. Are you going to make your kids learn two languages? And this is literally so funny to me because when our firstborn was born, Austin, me and my husband decided that we were only going to teach him Russian. We were only going to speak to him in Russian. Our mindset was that when he grows up, when he starts going to school, he is going to learn English so, so quick, like really, really quick. So we wanted to teach him just Russian so that he can understand two languages and it was going really really well until Isla came along. Isla was born and then we did Russian with her too, a lot of Russian phrases, a lot of um, Russian words, she understood what we were saying and then when she hit about one years old that kind of declined and I feel like we kind of stopped talking to them in Russian and then obviously Austin was already older at that time plus like they learned so they, they learn so quick from everything, from TV, just from listening to us talk, from, you know, surroundings. They started picking up English words really, really quick. So fast forward to now, we literally talk in English to them 95% of the time. We still do say a lot of Russian words, a lot of Russian phrases. They understand what we say to them in Russian most of the time. So we don't want them to forget the Russian language. They do know a lot of English now. It's like harder to incorporate Russian now, but we're gonna keep trying so that they don't forget the language. What do you do when you need a mental break and you feel like your cup is empty and you have nothing to give your kids until you fill your cup? So in other words, Pretty much what do I do when I know I'm gonna have a mental breakdown. <laughs> I know a lot of moms can probably relate to me on this. And this is honestly what I do pretty much all the time when I need a mental break. Whenever my husband gets home and he looks at me, he knows when I'll need a mental break. And that is when he really offers that I leave the house. And my husband is literally the sweetest. Like for that, like he like he literally comes home from work and he'll tell me to go leave the house. And it doesn't matter if the kids are eating dinner, if the kids are taking a bath, like whatever, I literally just go leave the house, go get some food somewhere or coffee or, or nothing, and just go drive somewhere and sit in a parking lot and sit in a quiet car. I either um, just sit in a quiet car or I pray, I listen to music, I watch something. I just literally forget what happened at home. I don't think about anything else. I just unwind and relax my mind and try to just not think about anything. And obviously it doesn't happen all the time because my husband is not home 24 seven. So in other cases, I would try to leave the kids at someone's house. Or if I'm at home with the kids and I need a mental break, I would just get the kids ready and 
go drive. Just go into the car and just go on a drive. It doesn't matter where I go. Just to get that mental break from being at home, just the home setting, yeah, go on a drive. Literally, turn on music and just go on a drive. <laughs> Dealing with mom guilt is the next one. This is something that is definitely not a one-time thing. Like, you do, you'll deal with this probably on a daily basis. There's so many cases where you can feel mom guilt. In this particular scenario that I'll share about, I have this often. So, let's say I'm overstimulated, the kids are fighting, I need to feed the kids, the house is a disaster, I need to clean the house. I would catch myself raising my voice to the kids and then getting irritated at them and then I would feel really, really guilty for doing that. And what I would do is I would calm myself down, I would say a quick prayer asking for patience, for extra patience and then I would always go and spend time with the kids. It doesn't matter if I, you know, take them outside, go play with them in the playroom, like whatever. I would just go and show them love and affection and just spend time with them. That is what I always catch myself doing if I'm in that scenario. And I feel like that scenario is pretty often lately, especially with two toddlers that are really close in age. It's obviously different with other scenarios. Um, sometimes even talking to somebody helps. Another mom, a friend, it doesn't matter. I feel like even to your husband, talking to somebody, I feel like definitely helps you kind of get out of that mom guilt. Have you ever struggled with postpartum rage or anything postpartum? Actually, I've never struggled with anything postpartum besides some health stuff. So no postpartum depression, no postpartum rage. I feel like there was some like off days with my firstborn you know, like when you haven't showered and you're like sleep deprived and then you need to feed your newborn. I feel like I've had a lot of those days, but nothing like crazy. But a month after I delivered my firstborn, I started having really weird symptoms. Symptoms that I've never experienced in my life before. Dizziness, lack of balance, um, high heart rate, literally they came out of nowhere on a regular day out of nowhere. And I don't know if that is from birth but it was postpartum so in a way it kind of you know relates to postpartum um but that is something that i still deal with to this day and one day maybe i will share my health story but as of now it's kind of private pretty much that is the only thing i struggle with postpartum all right homeschool private school or public school in the near future as of now we're leaning more towards public school things can change plans can change Homeschooling, I feel like for me, is not really an option because homeschooling is a lot of work. I feel like with homeschool, you have to have a lot of patience. I feel like homeschooling is just not for me. Private school or public school um, is the option right now, but we're probably leaning more towards public school. Anyways, that sums up part one of the Q&A. If you have any more questions, comment them down below. Um, that way I can answer them in part two. And thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video.